Hey Fragheads and Fragrance Lovers, welcome back. It's Benjamin here at the Centaur Fragrance Channel, and we got H24 by Hermes on our hands today. Now, first off, I want to welcome you to my channel. My name is Benjamin. I am a fragrance lover and a fragrance enthusiast just like you. So if you find that you like my channel, if you find that you like the content, and this is a really new fragrance, very few people have reviewed this baby yet, uh, you know, you all know what to do down below. But let's jump into this fragrance. We'll talk about the notes, but first off, I want to talk about the categorization of this fragrance. Now, now, that's not the most important thing to say it's a fougere or a chipra or a gourmand or whatever it might be but i do think it's important that they categorize this as a aromatic woody fragrance and when i think of aromatic yes it can be bright yes it can be florals uh, but i usually think of a citrus with an when i think aromatic now this fragrance to me is more of a floral woody fragrance and i would say that and i do want to put my put it out there and take a risk and uh and uh tell that to the world that this is going to give you more of a floral woody fragrance there's not really a lot of citrus here and we'll talk about that right now first off clary sage is on the top notes you really only get three big accords the clary sage the narcissus and the rosewood now, to my nose, the Clary Sage here is bright. It's kind of geranium-like. It's something kind of that might smell in between, uh, you know, something like, you know, oak moss and something in between geranium. It's not as bright or transparent as sometimes geranium can be, but it, uh, it's not as dense as regular sage. So it's kind of in between some of those green notes, and it does a good job. A lot of people love Clary Sage, so if you do, are, do happen to be a lover of Clary Sage as a note, this might be a beautiful thing for you. There's a lot of it in the opening. You immediately get the musk. You immediately get the Hermes. Very fancy, kind of classy type of DNA with that, you know, Hermes does, you know, does it right. If you don't know about Hermes and their history, they first started, you know, with leather goods. And then they, you know, kind of perfuming that for royalty or people. It actually was a status symbol. You know, when you would ride horses in a carriage to have very fancy, high-quality gloves. Uh, just like sometimes, you know, there was a time where people would wear big, very fancy, ornate big hats uh, to show status. But, um, you know, that's kind of where Hermes started. And, you know, some, so some of their fragrances are more leathery or kind of clean and classy and kind of effortless. Uh, kind of made to almost mask another smell smell like uh, again because leathery goods you know kind of smell bad especially processed the old-fashioned way you kind of cover that smell anyways getting back to the notes there is that dna here it's beautiful it uh, it can cover up your smell maybe a little bit but be clean my friends be clean and wear good fragrance don't just cover up a smell but i'm just joking away but the clary sage is nice here uh the clary sage is beautiful then in the middle notes, you get that, again, Narcissus. Again, Narcissus is somewhere in between, in my opinion. Uh, it's a white floral. It's clean. It's crisp. It's kind of in between like Neroli and Violet. It's kind of similar to both of those a little bit, but it's not the same. It does its own thing. I would say Narcissus is a little bit dry, and it does have almost a little bit more of a, uh, not a, not an aroma chemical uh, quality to it, but it can have a uh, an easygoing, almost... I don't know, like fuzzy quality about it. It's quite interesting. It's nice here. It certainly adds to the cleanliness, again, the, the classiness and the refinement that's in this fragrance. Getting into the base with the rosewood, uh, it's it's more of that musk-like uh, rosewood. It's very transparent, not a heavy woodiness. It's not deep or dark or rich or overtly woody. If you didn't say it was a woody fragrance, you might not even think of this as a woody fragrance. And honestly, if you told me this was an aromatic fragrance, I'd be maybe a little bit confused. So again, I consider this a floral woody or a floral musk fragrance, more of a floral woody musk. Um, nice fragrance though very well crafted and composed it's not it's not terribly exciting though i do have to tell y'all that straight off the bat this to me is not a terribly exciting fragrance there's not a lot really there's not a lot that changes not, again not all fragrances have to be complex not for, not all fragrances have to be overtly unique and there is a time and place for easy carefree uh wearable fragrances for anytime anywhere i understand that and i actually have quite a few in my collection uh but this fragrance to me really needed something a little bit special about it i don't feel like there's anything special terribly about this fragrance to me and again this is getting more into my opinion and i will say more at the end of the video but this is more of a fragrance for those who want something unisex. Easy to wear, an everyday classy fragrance that's refined. Uh, something more approachable because it's a little bit more affordable. 
We'll talk about that again also at the end of the video. But uh, this fragrance is something that, uh, for people who really aren't uh, Hermes fans. I don't think people who know that the history of Hermes and have smelled a lot of Hermes collections, I don't think that they're going to be big fans of this. Not that they hate the fragrance, but it's not going to do anything new. It's not going to do anything special. Uh, you know, this is more of something... You know, if nobody's, if you've never owned an Hermes and you walk into a boutique and somebody says, I'd like to try an Hermes or what would you recommend uh, from this brand? This is one that's going to be more mass appealing and a little bit more easy to approach and understand and enjoy. Maybe for the average person who does want a more aromatic, fresh kind of fragrance. Uh, so this is nice. It certainly does work and I can see where they're going for. It's also very unisex. Anybody can wear this fragrance, even though I think this one is marketed towards men, or I've seen some boutiques doing that. I don't know if uh, Hermes is really marketing this towards men. I think that's a big mistake if they are, because this is a big opportunity to have a more eccentric molecules, uh, you know, kind of, uh, you know, that kind of transparent, effortless, genderless, uh, androgynous type of fragrance. And I think that's, you know, every brand is going to want to have one of these. And Hermes kind of did need a fragrance that kind of fit this spot, you know, kind of uh, was genderless and easy to approach and more, uh, again, affordable and, you know, something that anybody, just about anybody could easily enjoy. I think that there is, this fragrance does fit a spot, but I do have some, I do have some other thoughts about it in the end. Anyways, nice fragrance. It does its job. Let's talk about that performance. Uh, the performance on my skin, again, I've sprayed this quite a couple times on my hands. You're going to get about six hours out of this fragrance. You might get seven if you spray it up on clothes. Yes, there is musk and there are aroma chemicals, so you can get beyond that. Uh, but as far as it reaching out and projecting it all... It, uh, it's not going to do much beyond the six, seven hour range. There will be some sillage. This, this makes this fragrance very approachable, perfect for the office, perfect for running errands, perfect for being out and about doing anything and everything. This, this is that kind of fragrance that, you know, you can get away with it. It's not going to offend anybody. It's going to smell classy and refined. Again, I, well, I have some final thoughts about that, but its projection is just right. I, I think that it, it's in a good spot. It's for an everyday uh, kind of fragrance. Again, some people want those eight hour plus fragrances, big notice me kind of fragrances. Uh, this is not that kind of fragrance. And getting into the compliment factor, I don't think this is a fragrance that really begs for that kind of... This is not overly seductive. This is not a come over here fragrance. This is not a notice me kind of fragrance. This is a classy, refined, effortless kind of fragrance for maybe somebody who usually doesn't wear fragrances or maybe for somebody who really doesn't care about fragrances and they just want to smell refined and good and uh, nothing fussy, not, nothing... Again, this fragrance is kind of linear in its own way, even though it does have some higher quality notes. And, I mean, there are kind of three big accords. It just doesn't seem or feel to change a lot. It does feel kind of linear. And uh, that's another reason why this fragrance feels kind of safe. And some people like that uh, feeling of familiarity. And it doesn't, over, you know, doesn't have a lot of twists and turns. Nothing scary about this fragrance whatsoever. So, getting into my final thoughts with this fragrance... Uh, this is a, you can get a 50 mil for about $80 and for about 105, 110 odd dollars, you can get the 100 mil. I think that's a fair price. Designer fragrances are actually getting more expensive, uh, especially with the prices and the economics and all that going on in the world and designer fragrances are creeping up in prices. So about a hundred dollars is kind of normal these days, even though it sounds terribly expensive for a designer fragrance. Uh, so this is Hermes touching, uh, you know, dipping their toes in the water giving a, t a test run uh, testing the market to see if people want a uh, you know more affordable Hermes fragrance and if they would like something like this I think that there is opportunity for this I think that there are people who will be who will enjoy this but I don't think this is an excellent release in my opinion there's a couple reasons why I want to say that this fragrance is a little bit too safe. Again, not every fragrance needs to be complex, but this doesn't do anything special for me. And I don't think for people who are looking for mass appealing fragrances, this doesn't have that aquatic likability, familiarity. It smells like the ocean. Uh, it doesn't have citrus. Uh, really that really makes it feel like a fresh inviting fragrance it just smells classy and effortless yes there are people who are going to like a timeless musky type of fragrance and there's lots of people who would like that 
and something effortless and the skin like almost but there's nothing that's even grabs the attention i think of the average person i think the average person also i think clary sage does work in this fragrance but i think it needed to be balanced out with uh, a semi maybe an unripened fruit or something semi-sweet or uh, or something bright and citrusy I, it's not that it's old-fashioned but it can feel almost a little stuffy and uh, I, again i like clary sage i know a lot of guys like it but if you're trying to make a unisex approachable modern fragrance for anybody and everybody I don't know if this is the direction to go. And again, this is definitely trying to be a more trendier fragrances for perhaps the younger people out there. Um, and again, I, again, this fragrance isn't really going to serve or appeal to the people who know the history and know of Hermes's other offerings. Albeit they be more expensive, they're more original, they're more creative, they're more exciting, and uh, they do a good job. Is this fragrance blended well? Yes. Does the, the does the Hermes quality sing through this fragrance? Yes. Honestly, you know, a lot of people might feel like this is a, kind of like Tear de Hermes, but they stripped everything away from it. If you're looking for a fresh, bright fragrance that's clean, and uh, maybe you didn't like that soiliness, that dirtiness of Tear de Hermes, this one, again, replaces it more with a metallic quality. And some people aren't really talking about that metallic quality, but it's not a huge component to this fragrance, but it is here. And it does give it a very, uh, that is the thing that probably the perfumer and the people working on this fragrance and the company expect for this fragrance to come off as interesting, uh, especially with the popularity of Silver Mountain Waters and some of the clones of Silver Mountain Water who have really uh, kind of rejuvenated interest in metallic fragrances. I think that honestly they saw some of that and maybe wanted some of that for themselves and it's funny how brands really jump on trends uh and are, are kind of uh you know want to make sure that they get their hands on those trends <laughs> and of course they want a piece of the pie they want some of the money anyways um it's a fine fragrance. I think some people, again, are going to like it. But just like the new Dior Ohm, the Dior Ohm 2020, the Reform, I don't think that, the again, the fans, the, the, the people who love this brand and love this company are going to be behind this fragrance. And I don't know if this is going to appeal very well. Or it might work for some, but I don't think it's going to be a huge top seller uh, from the brand. Hermes, I do want to see them have success. I love the brand. I, I love what they've done in the past. I think that it's a good move to move uh, into the designer game, into the fragrant, designer fragrance industry. And uh, because again, more, most of their fragrances are in that $150, $200 range and are kind of more boutique exclusives because not everybody seeks them out or maybe not everybody knows about the company. I think it's a great thing uh, to move, uh, you know, you know, there's a lot of consumers and a lot of people. Uh, there's a lot of uh, people who, you know, there's there's money to be made. Uh, and uh, these, again, these are designer brands and designer companies. Again, us in the fragrance community want to sh shy away from that. But a company is here to survive. And, uh, you know, that's a part of life. Uh, the thing is, I don't think that I think that they should have went with a, you know, a more citrusy line. They could have kept their Hermes DNA and their Hermes heritage, but uh, use some unique citruses. You know, maybe have one based off lemon. Maybe have one based off grapefruit and uh, some other citruses. Uh, and again, there's a lot of uh, the fragrance industry, especially with designer fragrances, there's a huge gap uh, with tropical fragrances. So there's so much opportunity. Why not give us a, gr a green semi-sweet uh, mango fragrance or a, a, a semi-sweet... Uh, papaya fragrance or guava or there's all kinds of exciting things that would work extremely well with this classy refined sparkling almost aldehydic type of dna that hermes is so famous for and i just think that uh you know this isn't gonna I, I do there might be flankers if this is terribly exciting if this does work for a lot of people we might see flankers uh but i again uh, this this might not do too well and hermes might kind of retreat or you know might not really attempt to do anything like this for a very long time or maybe they never will again but i do think i do encourage you hermes uh to do your best and to put your best foot forward is this a good attempt i do think this is a good flat a good uh, m uh step in the right direction uh, but i don't know how successful this will be so this is going to get a lukewarm review
I do think y'all should try this. I do think it's worth a go. If you are a big fan of Eccentric Molecules 01 or maybe 03, the, the Vetiver one, or if you like uh, Guerlain's Vetiver, that's nice. Again, Guerlain Vetiver, you can get amazing prices on that for about $35 odd dollars. It's an unbelievable fragrance for the money. You would like that much more than this. Uh, something that's much more mass appealing and probably... Uh, you know, more affordable is the original Isimiyaki Pour Ohm, but it's not, that 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 fragrance itself is even kind of risky. It's not as mass appealing, maybe as people think it is. The, the again, the regular or original Isimiyaki Pour Ohm. So, with this fragrance, is there anything that's really really comparable to this one? Uh, again, some some aroma chemical, uh, classy, refined, out of hitic, slightly green fragrances kind of compare but there's not a lot out there on the market if you're considering this fragrance and you're going to the boutique i seriously consider you not bought just blind by this one because of the hype not only because i don't think it's terribly special but uh, i think that you should try the um you know terre d'air hermes eau trace fresh it, the terre d'air hermes eau trace fresh has fresh in the name it has citrus it's much better than this fragrance it's much more refined in my opinion it transitions more so it's a little bit more playful and interesting but it's still likable it's still modern and it's still youthful the tear d'hermes eau trace fresh is also very unisex uh, ladies you can get you know you easily could wear that fragrance in my opinion even though it is a little bit classy and refined um again smelling this on my hand right now that metallic quality sings through, almost adding a, almost like a metallic almondy quality to this fragrance. I, again, I don't know how well this is going to be received in the fragrance community, and I don't know who's going to be going for this. But let me know in the comment sections below. How did you, does this fragrance sound good? What do you think about this fragrance? Have you tried it, and does it sound like a good, a good release? Uh, so again, I'm sorry that I was very wordy with this fragrance review. I'm sorry that uh, I wasn't you know, really concise or super, super straight to the point. I had a lot of feelings about this fragrance and I, I love Hermes and y'all don't might not know it, but Hermes is a brand that I've always loved. And this is actually some, uh, 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 you know, I was had high hopes and I had, I was looking forward to this fragrance in a really big way. And I, I personally feel like, you know, they took one step forward and maybe one step back. I don't know if they're where, where they want to be. We'll see how well this uh, fragrance sells once again, but I don't know if this is what Hermes is really wanting or looking for. Again, I think I think you got to play to your strong suit. Uh, you know, your your DNA really does work here, but I think you got to do it instead of making a skin-like, molecule-like fragrance, which some of those are popular. Yeah, you saw the popularity of uh, eccentric molecules and. Yeah, you've seen the popularity of some of these, uh, you know, metallic fragrances uh, like Pegasus by, Parfum, by Parfums de Marly and Silver Mountain Water by Creed and all the clones of Silver Mountain Water by Creed. Uh, but uh, Hermes, I think you got to play to your strong suits and uh, figure out how to do some magic with citruses and maybe uh, semi-unripened or semi-bitter uh, semi or sour fruit. Uh, I think that's going to be your magic. I think that's going to be your strong suit. And uh, of course, I do like dark complex fragrances. So I do look forward to the day maybe Hermes makes uh, their own collection that includes in everything from incense uh, to smoke uh, to coffee to who, who knows what else uh, Hermes might do in the future. Uh, maybe going into more of almost like a Serge Luton's type of direction. Anyways, beautiful company. Uh, mixed feelings, mixed reviews. Don't buy into it. Don't blind buy this one because of the hype. Uh, I don't think you should ever do that, especially with any fragrance. But is this blind buy worthy? I don't know if any fragrance is unless it's hard to get or you get an amazing price on it and you want to take the risk. Would I say that this is blind buy worthy? No. Uh, get yourself a sample. Go to a boutique if you can. The world's getting a little bit back to normal, so maybe you'll be able to find this one at the boutique soon. Anyways, these are my thoughts, my friends. Have a beautiful day. Hope that you enjoyed my review. Please like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell, share the video, and tell a friend. I'll see you in the next video, everybody. Stay safe, stay beautiful, be smelling great, and uh, I'll catch you in the next one. And um, thank you for watching my review. Uh, hopefully, I see you comment in the section. I respond to all the comments. I, I, I'm here for you, my friends, and I'll see you soon. So peace out, everybody. I'll, I'll catch see you soon, and bye.